pot. How's it going? Man?
And what type of information specifically? The um, make and color of the vehicle, license plate number, if it's from what state um, the registration number is. The state would ask to mark for identification state exhibit one. Okay. It's just for ID at this point? Well, if he's not going to object to it, he doesn't have to no objection. Is it exhibit? You know, no objection. State's one. Mr. Chairman, I'm handing you what has been entered as state's exhibit one. Is that the parking ticket that you issued to Mr. Ian on the date in question? The time in question? Yes. And um, what um, board vehicle registration is that for specifically? If you could read the Motor vehicle registration on that ticket? AKPF1, New Hampshire. And is it your understanding that that particular vehicle is registered to carry in? Yes. State so would seek to enter State's Exhibit 2 and certify a copy of the motor vehicle registration? No objection. Robin Hooding on parking meters, and I crossed the street, noticed again that his um, meter was expired, and I began writing a ticket. He attempted to Robin Hood his own car, but once I start a ticket, it's valid, and I finished the ticket and put it on his machine. And did you also get it? Did so you print out a ticket the same, similarly that you did at first? And you have to the same type of information? Yes. No objection. Take that under the seat. This is the three. Mr. Chairman, I'm giving you the three. Is that the parking ticket that you just described? Have we issued to Mr. Ian on the date and time of question? It is. And, um, and if you could just put that back. So, and if you could, um, start that. Um, is it your understanding, based on your training experience as a parking enforcement officer, that at the times that you issued those two tickets, both meters were functioning properly? Correct, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Officer McDermott, you stated you've been a parking enforcer for almost two years. Do you have any prior experience in law enforcement? No. No. So, drawing your attention to the initial ticket that was issued at about 2.20 p.m., uh, you identified that you were in the Gilbo lot and you saw the vehicle pull up on St. James Street, is that correct? Yes. How long have there been meters on St. James Street? Since I've been working here, but I don't know the exact length of time that they've been on that street. Do you recall seeing if there were any passengers in the vehicle? No. No, you don't recall? 
I know there weren't any passengers, and you, you don't recall if there were any passengers. I don't recall if anybody else got out of the vehicle. Mayor, you identified as having asked a question um, when you approached the expired meter, and you believed that the response of the driver was, um, maybe I want to go to court? Yes. So you believe that uh, there was an intention on the part of the driver not to fill the meter? You had a response when I asked you if you were going to put money in your meter. And that was your response. I, I don't know what your intentions were, but that was the response that you, you made. Do you recall if the driver made any attempts to fill the meter? No, he stood there and watched me with the ticket. The, the, the first ticket. The second ticket, you did attempt to put money in your meter. I stated that. Are there circumstances, uh, specifically referring to the St. James Street meter, are there circumstances by which a vehicle parked in that space um, could occupy an expired meter and not be issued a ticket? If there was no parking enforcement around, and they might get away with it. Are there certain vehicles that are exempt from uh, that sort of parking enforcement in that space? Certain vehicles that are exempt, like, um, Government vehicles are exempt, yes. Okay. Um, aside from government vehicles, are there any other sorts of vehicles that would be exempt from the meter violations? Uh, objection. I don't know if you want to ask about a specific exemption. <coughs> I don't know. It's is there a specific exemption you think is appropriate or applicable to this case? I'll withdraw the way. You stated that the driver of the vehicle, uh, in both instances, left their meter uh, before filling it and tried to fill other meters. So would you say that uh, the driver of the vehicle appeared to be thinking more of others' expired meters than their own? Objection calls for regulation, and also it's, it's not relevant. And, and so I'll let you ask one or two questions in this vein, but really kind of straying from what I have to understand in the side here. Okay, so to repeat the question. Um, did it appear to you as though the driver of the vehicle was paying uh, more attention to the expired meters of others than them? Yes. Uh, drawing your attention to the details of the second uh, infraction, alleged infraction, uh, which occurred at 4.30, um, you cited that you saw the uh, vehicle approach from across the street. Do you recall the manner in which the driver of the vehicle crossed to the opposite side of the street? Uh, I'm, I'm confused. At what, are you asking me if I, the first part, were you driving? You, were dri you drove up to a, the parking spot and then you ran across the street. Okay. Does that answer your question? So, um, that would mean that you saw the driver of the vehicle cross the street. Uh, was there, so there wasn't traffic in the road, they were able to just walk across the street? It was winter time, so, yeah, that was, so traffic was late. Did the driver use a crosswalk to cross? I do not believe so, but I cannot be certain. I, I don't recall how far up we were on the road to, to know if you would need a crosswalk or not. Um, well, you might not recall where you were standing at that particular time. Uh, we do have the specific meter number, so we know the exact location of that. I don't know it's relevant whether it's a crosswalk across the street. It probably isn't, but you're just trying to, trying to ask her if she recalls a specific location of a specific meter? Mm -hmm. okay. Would you try to answer that question? Um, do you have details of which meter it was that was expired? Um, I don't recall the number. I know I wrote it at the time on the ticket. The meter number is, is on the ticket. Is it possible that that meter is a significant distance from the crosswalk? I have to tell me that. 
Why is it relevant about how far the meter is from the crosswalk? Uh, well, if I continue my line of question, you'll be asking about uh, how the parking enforcer herself transported herself across the street, whether or not the crosswalk is utilized. Well, what, what is, whether, whether you use the crosswalk, if it was you in fact, or whether she used the crosswalk, how does that bear on the issue I have to decide as to whether or not the parking meter ordinance was violated? That's the question. Um, it's a matter of whether or not extraordinary measures were used to uh, to target a specific meter at a specific time, and uh, whether or not the parking enforcer went outside of her standard procedure of, uh, of approaching meters to do so. Targeting a specific meter on the other side of Court Street or the one she says you were on? On the side of Court Street where the court building is. Just, which is the one she, she says you were on. I know you're not acknowledging that, but she says that's what she Uh, yes. Okay. I don't know so if that's relevant see. either. I mean, she saw a violation and she issued a ticket. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see how it's relevant, the question, at least the way you're asking it. You might try another way. So I'm not, not able to ask the details of how the parking enforcer approached the vehicle. I can ask if she remembers how she approached the vehicle, but, it, but if, you, if you're trying to say whether she used a crosswalk or not, that's, that's not relevant. She says she doesn't recall, she doesn't recall. You can, you can ask her that. But well, I don't know if she's gone that far yet to say she did. Well, I'll just say, I'll let you, I'll let you ask her questions as to how she, how she, what action she took and how she took it, but this crosswalk stuff is not really getting anywhere. Okay. Um. At least so far. So you identified the drivers having crossed the street and began filling meters, correct? Yes. And you transported yourself. Uh, what was your next course of action before you spotted that violation? How did you approach that? I walked across the street, and I do not recall if I used the crosswalk or not. There was no traffic. I crossed the street. Did you... Um, did you increase your speed of movement to approach the vehicle? I do not recall. Is it possible that you ran to the vehicle? It's actually relevant. I don't, I don't understand why it's relevant. I, I, think I, I think I see what he's getting at, but I think you just, you just have to kind of frame your questions a little bit more directly, and I think you can make a little more headway here. It sounds to me as if you're trying to su suggest that the, that the witness uh, acted a little bit more vigorously in enforcing the, the, the uh, parking violation against you than she might have against someone else. Is that what you're trying to suggest here? Sure. Okay. Why don't you ask her if she did that? You stated that in the uh, issuance of the second ticket on Court Street that the driver made an attempt to fill the meter. Is that correct? Yes. Generally, when someone approaches you while you're in the process of issuing a ticket and uh, approaches with change to put in a meter, do uh, you generally allow them to do that and not issue a ticket? It depends on if I've already started the ticket or not. If I've started a ticket, and I generally continue to write that ticket. But not always? There are circumstances where people run up, they have hand, change in their hand, they have had to go into a store to get change, they come out with change in their hand, and then I allow them to put the change in the meter, and I don't continue to write the ticket. It's circumstances that are different. Do you recall if the driver made an attempt to approach and fill the meter prior to your beginning to enter the information into your parking lot? You were busy filling meters. I crossed the street to get away from you, as I usually do when you're out robbing hunting. I saw that your ex your meter was expired. I began to write the ticket. You ran across the street again to try to fill the meter because you're doing your robin hooding thing. <laughs> and I continued to write the ticket because I had already started it. So you would say with certainty that you began entering the information onto the computer prior to any attempt that you witnessed of the driver to fill the meter? Yes. So you would say that prior to this instance you were familiar with the vehicle in question, right? 
I've seen it, yes. And you're familiar with the license plate on the vehicle? I am now, yes. Um, does the license plate hold any significance or uh, have any meaning to you? No. It's a, I know that it's a play on keen parking enforcement, but I don't know the significance of where you got those initials. Has the driver of the vehicle ever provided assistance to the keen parking enforcement team? Interesting. Um, has the driver of the vehicle ever acted uh, at the request of parking enforcers in the past to help them fulfill their duties? Sustain. Um, has the driver of the vehicle ever retrieved erroneously issued tickets or filled meters at the request of the parking enforcers? I didn't, I didn't hear. I didn't quite hear all the words. Say again. Okay. Has the driver of the vehicle ever retrieved erroneously issued tickets or placed change into meters? That is a what? Uh, erroneously issued tickets. If he, if you, I don't think it's relevant. I don't quite understand it, but I think it's relevant. Sustain. Score! <laughs> Officer McDermott, do you believe that you issued? the second ticket in the day uh, with greater enthusiasm than you issued the first ticket. I don't know this is how well, I understand what you're going to do. I don't write tickets with enthusiasm. I, I just do my job. And when you are out Robin Hooding, I go faster to get away from you. And so I approach vehicles with a little bit more speed because you're chasing me. Would you say that the actions of the driver increase the efficiency of the parking department? <laughs> 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 All right now, folks. Stay. I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I would ask. Uh, so maybe this would be a second. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to submit a copy of the license plate to the city ordinance in question and ask the court to take judicial notice of it. Any objection? No objection. Okay. Is that nice? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. All right, anything else from the city? No, you're on the city. Do you want to testify, Mr. Chairman? Uh, defense rest. I think both cases have been established beyond a reasonable doubt. Like the guilty findings on each. What, what are the fines? It's my that they are both $5, right? <laughs> All right, so total is $10. Do you have that for them? Um, yes, if, if I can pay in a bond coin. All right, let's have one more of that, all right? I'm going to pay the fines if you pay them at the window. Uh, you have a right to appeal to the Supreme Court if you're not satisfied with the outcome. You can do that if you like, and I'll explain that to you at the window. Wow. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Just take care of that. Thank you. So we're here at the Cheshire Superior Courthouse. Also, the district court is housed here. And I just had a trial here for two parking tickets back in February 25th. It's now July 18th, the wheels of justice move slowly. But it was a good time. Um, got to question the witness, who was AKPF Agent Jane. And it was a, a lot of fun, except for the fact that my argument really got derailed. They wouldn't let me make the argument that there were extraordinary measures gone to to issue that second ticket. It was just not an allowed argument. At one point, it was almost as though the judge stated for the witness, like, well, if she says she doesn't know about that, on a part of questioning we hadn't even gotten to, where he was just like, oh, you're going with this, and yeah, so, long story short, check out that video. At the end, I asked if they accept Obama coin. the judge kind of made a disparaging comment about it, but I do have five dollars in Obama coin. I'm going to be trying to pay my ticket with that. It's been accepted everywhere I've tried it, so I don't see why there would be an issue. 
and it's five dollars in dime so there's two tickets two five dollar tickets it's ten dollars um, so yeah we won't be able to film inside because they're afraid of cameras unfortunately this is one of those old-fashioned places where they don't like truth in objective form so it'll be a secret what actually happens but if we get through and everything's good when I get back on the other side here we'll make a video saying everything's good Alright, so we just had quite the experience in the courthouse just now trying to pay with Obama coin and $5 in dimes. Um, when I put the $5 in Obama coin out on the table, the receptionist was very curious, uh, critical, spect skeptical of them. She was not convinced that they were quarters, she said she had no way to know that they were quarters. I said, you can put them in parking meters and they activate them. Um, and she, upon further examination of them, I had about three dollars in Obama coin that had the standard traditional quarterback, which is the uh, eagle, like this. But the ones that did not have that backing, the state quarters, she did not want to accept. So they made the distinction of not accepting Obama coin unless it was the traditional general quarter. And I thought that was a funny distinction. So then there was a two dollars that we were going to be short. So Joe stepped up to the plate, seeing this, and said. I'll pay the I'll pay the remaining two dollars for you, and I figured well even though I'd rather pay with Obama coin I'd happily accept that for the sake of efficiency. And when Joe paid, he handed them a five, and the receptionist sold back the Obama coin to him. So even though the court was unwilling to accept Obama coin, they played part as an Obama coin distributor in this particular transaction by giving Joe change in Obama coin. Um, so he was happy to have bought them at that rate because that's a good rate to receive Obama coin at. Sometimes they sell three for a dollar, two for a dollar. Um, I've seen them sometimes go for as high as nineteen ninety-five plus shipping and handling on those infomercials. So I paid my ticket with five dollars in dimes and then a five dollar donation from Joe, who was awarded Obama coin for his donation from the court. And here's my receipt. Everything's been taken care of. The AKPF has been paid. The courts have been paid. Um, the middleman, all the people in between, from the top to the bottom, and we're all good. Oh, and they gave me a notice of appellate rights in case I wanted to appeal the parking ticket. I could take it to the Supreme Court, which would be pretty cool because I could appeal all the questions that I wasn't allowed to ask that I thought were totally relevant. That was nice.